Camera No Instructions. I'm Bob. And I'm Josh. Welcome back. Hi. Oh, look at that camera angle right up there. In jo Whoa, what is happening? It's been so long I've forgotten the buttons I'm supposed to push. <laughs> Anthony's pushing buttons. So if you're watching the YouTube video and things are going a little awry, you can it's blame it. Anthony's fault. On Anthony Rose. Well, uh, I w was hoping we would record last week, and we had every intention to, and we just didn't. So trying to make sure we got it in this week. I said we would start doing this again, and that is my intention. It's just kind of hard to do with everything else going on. You have to break yourself free from the plywood yeah, man. Minecraft kitchen you've got going oh on upstairs? Oh, my goodness. It's just like... Boxes everywhere. Yeah, it, it feels like... I was talking about this on Making It today. That it feels like I don't even know if I'm at the halfway point with making all of the cabinets and like having the full kitchen renovation stuff. It just feels like a never-ending thing where I'm at right now. Yeah. You know, it will, but it you know, it's not like I see the end, the light at the end of the tunnel yet. I do. <laughs> Good I mean, for you. I, no, <laughs> to, to give you some some broader perspective, yeah. like I know that you're really close to it, mm. and so it just looks like this is another piece of plywood to attach to another piece of plywood to yeah. stack on top of other pieces of plywood. But it really is taking shape. It's it's coming together. It's looking really good. Uh, Jenny's making some progress on like design aesthetics and things to give it that that homey kind of feel because uh, like we were upstairs today and you have working drawers in about half of the kitchen mm -hmm. so i was like well she could start loading stuff in here just to make sure it fits and then you were like yeah just put it in there like yeah. add all your pans and your pots and whatever you want to be in the place and then that's that's a huge step toward normalcy that's true yeah already that's true who needs drawer fronts I mean, <sighs> you just fill them up and let them be yeah richie rich with your drawer fronts everywhere <laughs> <laughs> or we could just cover the fronts with like uh, contact paper. That's not a bad you idea. You can change it anytime you wanted to. Hmm. Not a bad idea. Maybe I'll pitch that one to the wife. Suction Probably cups. not gonna work. Did you carry around like a key? And then if you want to open it, you just <laughs> suction cup to the drawer and you pull it out, <laughs> and then you put it back on your keys like a janitor. Ooh. Oh man. I wonder why more people don't do that. Keep their keys. Be on like a, yeah, like oh. on the little real thing. It seems like a pretty good way to do it. Be less likely to lose them, but yeah. Anyway, what's going on? I am all kinds of turned around in this Lego model because you haven't touched it in a yeah, long time. I don't remember the last time I worked on old Ecto One over here, but I started a new bag and automatically it has like a bunch of pieces listed, and then just the model looks different. And I have to assemble a thing, and it, it normally it would like oh to make this assembly you add all these, but it doesn't. It just shows an assembly amongst other blobs of assembly and i have to try to backtrack as to how they got there hmm. yeah i guess that's one of the create is it the creator or expert sets expert i guess i don't know i'm up to the challenge it's just it kind of takes me back whenever the the manual itself is inconsistent hmm. and they're like oh i've i've showed you how to make this goofy little thing like this people watching i have to make this and then all of those hmm. but yeah it's not bad it's just it catches me off guard every once in a while where you think it's walking you through and then it doesn't. Right. Mm. I um, am just about finished with my Slave 1 model. And hopefully we'll finish it today, but we'll see. I ordered um, some more Lego sets. Mm -hmm. And I realized something about myself, something kind of new, mm -hmm. last couple of days. I've liked Lego my entire life. Yeah. I've always had a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And I've always built sets and then torn them apart and put them back in the pool with everything else. I was never, I was kept the instructions. Like if I want to build it again, I can build it again. No big deal. And so I've got all those Lego bricks that I've had my entire life. And since we started doing this show, I, you know, we started buying sets to make. And I started getting some of the UCS Star Wars sets that mm -hmm. are really cool that I want to keep put together. The collector series. That's what I realized. I've become a Lego collector without even realizing it. Oh, you should have just asked. I could have told you that a long well, time. Well, no, there's a difference between like liking to liking buying the pieces and buying the sets and making them and then tearing them apart and then, you know, like having a catalog of buildable stuff. I think the difference for me, maybe this is all just for me, maybe it's been super obvious from the outside. Now I'm at a point I'm looking for when new sets come out to see if there's something that I want to get to build to have the model itself, not the pieces that make up the model. Ah, 
And so it's a little bit different from me looking at not what pieces can this give me to add to my inventory, mm -hmm. but like, oh, the bat wing. That's cool. I want the bat wing, not the black pieces that make up the bat wing. And so I right. found myself starting to buy, I mean, obviously I've bought a lot of Lego in the last few years because of the show, but started buy, buying sets to have the, the model, which is, I guess, just a shift for me. But I'm also recognizing how much money I spent on Lego uh, at this point in my life. But I can, because I'm an adult. I mean, and if if anybody out there has a weakness for Lego, they are kind of killing it lately. They really are. Man. They've stepped up. They've got the Space Shuttle Discovery that I want. Immediately when I saw that, I sent that to my wife as early Father's Day present mm. exclamation point. But I don't know that she knows it's coming out tomorrow. And so maybe I should just buy it for myself <laughs> because I don't think she has the same sense of urgency that I do. Oh. They've got more like Star Wars specific sets like the display helmets. They've got this, the Scout Trooper. They've got the Imperial ordered. Probe. Ordered. You got the Imperial Probe <laughs> right too? Yes, Dang. I did. Of course you did. I know you did. <laughs> I mean, the, the Scout Trooper is one of my favorite Stormtrooper helmets. Yeah. And the, the, I lost the name of the probe bot. droid. The probe droid is one of my favorite droids. Yep. So I was just like, oh, on the same day, pre-order? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I did something bad. Bad like awesome? Bad like awesome. Okay. But bad like That's expensive. That's forgivable. Well, I, I mean. So I was ordering the two of those. Uh-huh. And at some point beforehand, I put the Star Destroyer in my cart. Which one? The big one. The big, big one? Yeah. Ooh, and I was like, because I've been thinking about it back and forth. I'm like, that's a really cool. This is what made me realize <laughs> I, was a, I was a collector. I put that in my cart like a couple of months ago and was like, you know, maybe someday when I hear that this thing is being taken away, mm -hmm. you know, when they retire sets, like they're gone, gone. And I still haven't put together the big Millennium Falcon. I was thinking about that the other day. I still have not. But yeah. if you look at the price of that thing now, oh, it's yeah. like way up there. They're commodities. Yeah. I mean, Limited. just like most things that, that spark nostalgia, that have a limited run and some sense of scarcity, the price, when you look on eBay, I tried to find, um, I forgot the exact name, but there was a biplane. Like oh, it just made like a World right. War One yeah, biplane. Yep. Yep. It is quadrupled in price from its original price. Yeah. The basic Lego chess set. Also doubled in price. It was on sale a year or two ago for like 50 bucks and they had a limited quantity and I went to buy it and it was gone and it was double the price the very next day on eBay. Yeah. So it's for crazy. an investment, these silly little child's bricks are pretty good. I mean, they all get retired. So no matter what system you're talking about, whether it's, you know, the Star Wars stuff or the city or the whatever, there's a market for every single group. Yep. And anything that gets retired the price immediately skyrockets and will continue to go up. It doesn't plateau. If you look at the original pirate stuff. Oh, yeah. Crazy. The knights. I've been trying to find a yep. knight's castle because I have a deconstructed knight's castle in my kid's room. Uh, that Theoretically, I could put it back together. But I love the knight set. Yeah. And they're, they're hinting that they're going to bring them back. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Yeah, I think they probably will. Because those were the ones, that, I mean, those, like the woodland ones that had like little Robin Hood looking guys, a little yeah. brown bow and arrow, like that was my jam. I liked those way more than the pirates. Hmm. So all the knights I really liked, and I want to share that with my kids, and I want to build those. And I never had any of the pirate sets, but I did have um, the little Robin Hood hideaway mm -hmm. one set. It was like about this big. It was yep. a tree with like an opening thing. A little... Yep, and I had the the white horse that had the little lit, the, hit, the hitch that comes yep. straight back off of him. He pulled a little cart. I had one of the castles. Um, it was the gray, not the yellow castles. It was after that. The gray castle where it was like basically a square, about 12 inches square. And the two back parts of it would snap away and it would fold out mm -hmm. into like a, you know, like a flat castle front. And that was one of my favorite sets. That was one that I rebuilt so many times because it was like a play set. It wasn't just a... Yep. A thing like you, I don't know. It was awesome. Anyway, back to my story. So, I went to order this. Uh, this is a terrible story because you know where it's going. But I went to order the helmet and the probe droid, mm -hmm. and the thing was already in my cart. And I was like, "Well, I can't like, get it's like it so out much of the work cart. to hit delete from I mean, my cart." The remove button is all the way over there. No, but I got to thinking about like I still haven't made the Millennium Falcon, and I plan to. I don't plan on keeping it as like a resellable item. 
But then I was like, if I've held it this long and I haven't made it, like, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I will decide to sell it someday. I and thought you I, were purposely holding on to it as an investment I at a certain point. I thought about, at one point, buying a second one to keep, to put in the attic, to keep mm. and, and, you know. But then I, that made me think about, well, the Star Destroyer, I think, is super cool. I don't know where I would put it if it were put together. The thing's huge. But right maybe I could buy it, and then if I decide not to make it, I can resell it. Like, they're not going to go down in value. Yeah. That's eight hundred dollars. It's a it's an expensive thing to put in a box and put in an attic and hope that you can keep it in good enough shape to sell it again, because that that's yeah. a concern. But then I was like, yeah, but you know, like I work pretty hard for my money and I'm an adult and if I want to have a star destroyer that I build into a table at some point, I should do that. And so I did, and it will be here today. Today? Yeah. <laughs> I got a call from FedEx yesterday saying, you have to sign for this package because it's like the size of a child. <laughs> it's huge. You we should have recorded after that. Well, we could have unboxed that. Oh, that's true. Then we could become an unboxing channel. Well, okay. So this led me to another thing. I saw a channel that just randomly, like YouTube showed it to me. I don't know. I don't know the guy's name. I don't know the name of the channel, but it was a guy reviewing the new Darth Vader helmet that they just put out. And he's like, has a, a copy of the box. It says not for sale on it. The Lego sent it to him to mm. review it. And I'm like, wait a second. Mm. How does, how does how that do you get that gig? happen? Yep. Like, maybe we should have another channel that's just Lego reviews. Or, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> and yeah, then, we should. Yeah, but let's, that let's led me that. down. This is a weird moment. We had a good run with the DIY stuff, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Not as a replacement, but it got me thinking about, like, we only use video for the thing that we started using video for. Now, we've experimented to some, like, live streaming, but it was still around the kind of building stuff. We've done this show through video, which is still kind of around building stuff, a little more life stuff. But, like, we don't really take advantage of video for other things like that. Like, I would never want to be an unboxing channel just for the sake of that, because I don't really care about that. And I would be the jerk who just, like, ripped boxes open in the most unsatisfying way possible just to irritate people because I don't care about that process. But the thing inside the box, you know, it would be cool to spend some time talking about, like, oh, they use these pieces in this interesting way rather than just, like, watch me open this bag. That yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it got me thinking about, like, maybe we should use video for some other stuff that's un totally unrelated to what we typically do just as a fun way to use video. And all of those thoughts together made me realize, like, I don't think I'm just like a Lego fan anymore. I think I'm a collector of the models from Lego. Yep. Because I don't really build for, like, creatively build anymore. I would like to. I just don't really have the time or the open space to do it. But that used to be a thing I did a lot, you know? Yeah. I would just, like, pull everything out and come up with a one word i'm gonna make a helicopter shark today and i would just make that thing hmm. you know um i don't really do that anymore so anyway i don't know little little self-reflection while i'm batching out cabinet boxes over and over and over and over and over i learned that about myself i have always loved the mix of taking these super basic I mean, by themselves, nothing, little bricks, and making these amazing creations out of it. I think it's an amazing feat of engineering and of art. And I think whenever they licensed Star Wars and they were able to hit on people's nostalgia, I think that they... I could mainline Legos the rest of my life. Mm. I could just get Legos for every birthday and holiday and be a happy man. That's pretty much what I get. Yeah, I mean, and it's kind of dope. <laughs> Although at this point, I buy too many for myself, and so there aren't sets left over for them to buy me at all. Yeah. Days. That's something I have to be careful of, because they do get a joy out of giving those, because they know we enjoy them. So. And they're expensive. <laughs> they are. And so this Ghostbusters car, the Ecto-1 that I'm putting together right now, like it was kind of expensive, and you and I talked about it for the show, and it was like, well, it needs to last a while. Like It needs to last more episodes, because I, as a completionist and a perfectionist, just want to... like. I want to follow the instructions as precisely. And like, I imagine in my head that there is some type of competition 
yeah that i'm pretty sure exists somewhere and if not i want to sponsor it like the first person to correctly build this thing wins ready set go hmm. and so in my head i am just like i am the the robot in the factory like boop, 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 putting all the little things and then like time i hit the little timer and then my joy is there and then i can play with it and in the off the secret office that we have that's where a lot of my lego sets go either those or in the homeschool room we have upstairs i built big built-ins and so I was thinking about the space shuttle. I'm like, where's the space shuttle going to go? Dashboard. Like, well, part of me was like, that is a super fortunate and blessed place to be in my life. Yeah. That I have to figure out where the giant Lego set in my house is going to be displayed. Mm-hmm. Like that thought. I have a an amazingly cool wife who wants to also share and display Lego sets. I have the ability to build a custom thing to hold a Lego set, and I have enough of them that it is a bother, air quotes, to find a place to hide it. And I was like, that right. sentence alone is an amazing place to be in the world. Yeah, and there's more to it than that. Like, you have the funds to buy the Lego set. Yeah. You have the home to put these things in. You have the... Yeah, I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah. About how ridiculous... Yeah, I'm with you. And it just makes my heart happy. And I love space i absolutely love all thing rockets and whenever they came out with the discovery set lego has made like three or four different space shuttle sets you have one Mm -hmm. that you received as as a gift from one of your family members and it's pretty good it's got the solid rocket boosters it's got the the center tank it's not bad i remember looking at that going that's not bad this is the pinnacle of of spaceship space shuttle all things it is like a good two and a half three feet wide it, the scale is there they made specialty pieces just for this space shuttle it's got a hubble telescope that fits inside the payload <laughs> that's pretty cool like oh uh, yes i didn't realize how big it was because i don't I guess i would looked at it that closely but they have these goofy little like aside youtube videos whenever they make like an idea set or a creator set and the designers kind of get together and they like talk about how they did it and they're just eclectic, crazy personalities of the designers that put these guys, that put the, the the designs together. And they're like wearing weird knockoff astronaut suits and like <laughs> one guy's got a helmet and they're just like being silly. And it's amazing to see other people that love what they do so much that they can just be like silly about it. Right. Because I think myself included and the rest of the world, like how many times are you afforded the opportunity to be silly at work? And if you are, then that is an amazing place to be. Right. Like that you can just express yourself creatively and you're not reprimanded for it. It's like encouraged. Yeah. Even. Yeah. It is a net good for the place that you exist to be a creative person. And I've always wanted to go to Billund, to go to Lego headquarters, just to like be there and make some weird little pilgrimage to like Lego world. I've been to Lego Land. It's okay. Like, I mean, it's it's an amusement park. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they're there to, like, make money and, and make you buy stuff, and it was cool. But, I don't know. Legos I, I, is one of those things that, like, I'm very happy that my parents spent the money and the time to get my brother and I Lego sets. Mm-hmm. Because it could be anything. And my uh, middle son, we were talking about last episode, like, he needed something to do. So he and I just, like, we're building stuff now. He wants to build Legos with me, which is amazing, and I absolutely want to. The table that I built for them is too low, and it's very uncomfortable, so I need to try to figure that out. Hmm. And my legs fall asleep when I sit on them weird after <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes of playing with Lego. But it's it's one of those things that just brings you joy. Yeah. That's that's it. It's I mean, it's yay, it's tied to all these emotions, nostalgia, you know, creativity, and all that. Hooray, but, like... It just makes you happy. Yeah. It's not destructive unless, I mean, you're like going in crazy debt or whatever, but I mean, there's worse things to be addicted to. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that should be their new slogan. Lego. <laughs> so this episode is a love letter to Lego, apparently. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's building Lego sets has become a different thing for me than it used to be. Uh, I think now... I've gotten into the habit of last night I pulled out a set that I got for Christmas that I had never finished. It's just been in my closet. I started it and, and 
I just haven't had the time or the kind of motivation to sit down at the end of the night and work on it. But that, for a long time, that was a thing that I did on a pretty regular basis. I would try to spread out like a bag a night to like make a set last and you know, get the kids in bed. I pull this out on the table and sit on the couch and Jenny and I watch a show or something and I just like kind of piece together something. And it's almost mindless because if you follow the instructions and you're used to doing it, you don't really have to pay attention to what you're doing. But then you can pay attention to what you're doing if you want to. And so it's become a thing that's kind of part of my wind down a lot of nights, you know? Um, and the cool thing is that it can be kind of mindless. It's a wind down, and then you step back from it when you're done for the evening or for the day or whatever, and you've got like a thing in front of you. It's mm-hmm. very gratifying. Um, yeah, so Lego. It could be worse. What was your slogan? What did you say? There's worse things to be addicted to. Yeah, there you go. Yes, so what else is going on? with you uh we're gonna go to disney Disney. next month it's almost vacation time do you want to talk about getting shots oh yeah we can so what's day what day is now wednesday in two days i have to go get a covid shot i have to i'm going i (laughs) through the the world coming together i am afforded the opportunity to go get the covid vaccine and I think you are too. I don't know when mm-hmm. you're going. Yeah, uh, we're going. I don't know. In, I think a week from today. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. Thank you to all the people that have made that possible. Yeah, for real. Because I'm pretty stoked about it. It's pretty wild. And there's, I, I get my healthcare through the VA because I'm an Army veteran, and notoriously they are slow and paper based, and they're. A, bureaucratic system so it's uncomfortable to deal with and notoriously they're dealing with older veterans so they they're not particularly tech savvy but because of covid they've had to do a lot more like online face-to-face telehealth kind of things Mm. so i kept reading like when is the covid vaccine going to be available for veterans and i saw that um a politician here in kentucky said that one of the clinics in lexington was giving them out regardless of age. Like there was no age gap like there typically was. For just for veterans. Yeah, just for veterans. But then the president the other day signed a bill that any veteran, regardless if you get your health care through the VA and their spouses are now eligible. Oh. Um that's awesome. But I was reading up and it was like, oh you can sign up in this put your email or whatever and then we'll tell you when you're ready. And I'm like, yeah, sure you will. If you can find your keyboard and plug it in. But the other day I got a text message and it was like, oh, this is the VA. You can go get a, a, a COVID vaccine now. I'm like, yeah, okay. Sure, I will, guy from India. What do you want from me? And I was like, <laughs> the VA does not know how to text message people, first off. You can't rotary dial a text message. And so I went on the website and I'm like, mm, I don't know, I'm skeptical. Yeah. And then on there in like very bold super huge font was like if you get a text message from this number then it is real <laughs> i was huh, like man wow. they, they know who their audience is yeah and it, i could schedule it uh through the text message it That's was awesome. like you're uh, eligible or whatever respond with a time and a date that works with you i was like huh, that's very broad so i was like how about on this day at this time i'm like again i, I think it's just like outdated slow bureaucratic thing i'm like they're not giving me a format to put the date and time in so it's gonna get messed up and this is dumb and i was like what about this date this time that's easy and they're like well we don't have any on that date how about this date at this time and you could tell it was it was pre-populated yeah but it was pretty close to you know being a natural human communication Hmm. i was like wow that's great and it was like text back one if you want to secure this time so i hit one and then it was like that time's not available. <laughs> so you got to do the thing. <laughs> and so there was a dumb glitch, but I imagine like a whole bunch of people at one time were trying to race to do this. Yeah, and so true. I got a time on a Friday, which I normally go pick up my two smaller kids from the homeschool group. Cause my son does it afternoon. My two younger kids just do the morning. And so me and my two little ones going to go drive up to the VA hospital, which I've never been to in a big city. <laughs> and I'm going to get my COVID vaccine with my kids mm. to show them that, Like, they're not the only ones that get shots. Like, everybody needs, you know, you get shots for appropriate things in life. It's not just because we're mean to you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I I told our kids that we were, 
we were getting the shot and they were like, oh, when do we get it? I'm like, oh, sorry, guys. You can't get it yet. And they were like, yeah. well, why not? And I'm like, oh, you know, you don't need it yet. Yeah, y'all too young. Um, but I it was saw funny because were... my youngest, um, the last time he got any shots, it's been a couple of years because he's kind of past that initial you know, group of shots that they have to get. Um, but he kicked one of the nurses, I think, in the face. <laughs> Like he really doesn't like shots. In the face. And I was a nurse get that close to some kid's and foot. Fought. I, well, I mean, he was like in pure violence. Right? Oh, I know why. Because I think I took our kids to the same doctor that you guys took your kids. And the way that they do it, they don't give them in the arm. They give them in the thighs. Oh, maybe. And so the kids had to there. sit on my lap. And this nurse just like hooked their feet in her armpit. Oh. And it was just like, wah-cha, wah-cha, like jab, jab. And so he probably <laughs> shimmied loose and just yeah. smacked her right across the face of his foot, which is unfortunate for that nurse. But now in my head, I can see how it's probably not the best way to do it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I that. think the sneak attack approach. Well, so my mom was bringing up a video the other day that she saw, and I'd seen it too, of where this doctor with this baby was like taking his finger and poking the baby, just like touching the baby on his forehead and on his shoulders and on his knees. And, I, and just kind of doing this, and the kid started thinking it was a game. He's playing along, and then all of a sudden, the other hand, he just goes boop, like in one of the places of it, and then kept doing his hand. The kid didn't even notice he got a shot. <laughs> like, well, do that, then my kids would not beat you up. Yeah, but. they make it quite dramatic. But then they come in with stickers. <laughs> That'll make and it's better. like, and I had the three kids with me, and they all needed booster shots because they hadn't seen a doctor in a while whenever we first got here. And I remember, like, my oldest one needed this many, and my two younger, they needed whatever. And so by the time it got to, like, the young kids, they had seen their older brother get, like, stabbed with four oh, needles. Yeah. And they're like, nope. I'm like, we'll go get toys. This is a bribery situation. I will bribe you. It'll be okay. And then, like, when they get that first shot, I'm like, how's it going to go? And you can see that, like, confused look on their face. They're like, this feels weird, but it kind of hurts. I'm not sure if I like this. Uh, okay, please stop now. Boom, I'm going to scream. And then it's like, look, a bumblebee sticker. <laughs> and then they're just like holding a pack of stickers with this like look on their face. Like, what did you do to me? And how did you let me go through with that? You monster. And I try to explain to them, especially during, you know, COVID. And I'm like, you know, you get a vaccine, you get these things for a reason. And it's, it's a risk reward benefit. And I try to explain that to them as much as a five and six year old can understand. Yeah. But this is an opportunity for them to actually see me get it. And kind of live out like, yes, I am doing this. These are the reasons I am doing this. You know what you should do? Kick the nurse in the face when you get the... Heck no, I'm going <laughs> to scream super loud and then like look in the back because it's a drive through thing. And I was looking in the back of the Jeep and go, you're going to buy me Legos now! Because <laughs> I set a precedent. That's a really good idea. You get a shot, you get a present. I like that. Where's my present? That's right. Why did you make me do All this? All right, kids, we're going to go get the shots today. Make sure you bring your allowance. That's right. Why? Bring your money. Uh, because you're buying daddy lunch. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about getting it. Um, I think it's really cool. I. It's been interesting to watch people get their vaccine and then post about it. Because, I, don't, I haven't really seen any like negative response to that. But it also seems kind of like a. I don't know. Seems like kind of a weird thing to post on social media about. I think the PR surrounding this uh, has been pretty clever. It's like when you vote. You vote, you take a little picture of the sticker because you're excited and you want to try to spur other people on and you're like a micro-influencer in your little world. I think it's the same thing. Hmm. And now there's a, a bunch of angry internet people who are upset about the idea of... Uh, the term shot passport has come up like you needed some kind of documented proof and you would hold on to it that you got the vaccine and people are all up in arms like this is a terrible thing and i don't get that because you have a shot record you have a little yellow card that says all of the shots that you've ever gotten yeah like when you sign kids up for school you have to give that to mm -hmm. the people i had one when i was in the army and it was really dumb because you had a yellow shot record that says i got these 20 shots today and then you could go, you show up the next week and they're like, oh, we have to put it in the computer so your card's not worth anything. So you get 20 more shots. And you go back the next time, they go, oh, all my shots are in the computer. They go, no, 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 we need your shot record. So you get another 20 more shots. So it's 
verified evidence that you got the thing. Hmm. And I don't see how that is a bad thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's a... It's no different than having a driver's license, really. But I see the I, the thing where somebody could be like, oh, so now I can't do these things unless I carry a document around with me or whatever. But I don't It's know. an invasion of someone's, like, health. Yeah. But, like... I don't know. Your driver's license says that you're an organ donor. So that tells me that you hmm. you want your guts freely available to anybody after you're dead. <laughs> that seems to be more invasive than telling somebody that you're inoculated against a worldwide pandemic. Yeah. But that's just me. I know we all have different life experiences and some people are are they are impacted differently by the idea of something. Like yeah. I think if you were to frame anything as like you have to show your papers. Right then people will automatically get defensive and think that you're in like some cold war Europe type situation. But like you carry so many different pieces of like air quotes, like paper to prove that you're competent to drive a car, that you Mm -hmm. live where you say that you live. And if this is a thing that I don't have to wear a mask or I can freely get on an airplane or go to Disney world or whatever, like you got, if you get the vaccine, why would you want to hide the fact that you're now, able to do more stuff i don't know it's, it's confusing to me yeah i don't think it's that they want to hide the fact that they can i think it's just another requirement like i'm not i'm not condoning it but i i think i understand why someone would be hesitant to like now i need a thing to prove that i can do stuff like it's a, just another thing that's not about uh you know like your driver's license is based on the test that you took proving that you have the knowledge you did the practice to mm-hmm. be able to do a thing and I guess you could argue that a vaccine is not at all that, but I don't know. Whatever. I yeah. don't care. I'm going to carry it around. If somebody wants to see it, I'll have is it. it a, I mean, I've seen people with their card. Is, I don't know if it's something that you have to carry around or like if the person at Kroger tells you to put your mask on, do you like flash it like an FBI badge and they go, oh, and then they like wink at you and then you're able to walk through the store. Like, I don't, I don't it, think It doesn't so. grant you any special power. No, or anything. because, oh. I think I just heard the FedEx truck leave. That means there's a very large Lego set somewhere. That somebody didn't sign for. Well, so it could be all of ours. Somebody down listening here Listening community. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, we're getting the vaccine. I'm excited about it. Uh, it's just cool. Not that I'm really that concerned about myself, but it's cool that we're at a point to where it's accessible to people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As it the accessibility broadens to just more groups of people. I think that's great. So I think that's what is more exciting to me than actually getting the shot. <laughs> yeah. Hands down. I don't want to get a shot. I'm a big baby. I'm, I'm, I sympathize with my children all day when they don't want to get shots. I'm like, yeah, it kind of sucks. It's just when you're an adult, you're able to not pay attention to it sucking as much as you are when you're a child. Yeah. But it's not fun. They haven't had their blood drawn yet. I don't want to tell them about that. Oh boy. Which is, again, one of those things that you have it done enough times. And if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, it's not terrible. But yeah. it's not pleasant. No, but it, it, it's not it's that. It's necessary, bad. though. Right. Nah. Ooh, there's like a pivot point on the stand for this thing. That's pretty cool. For your Slave 1 model? Yeah, it has a two-axis pivot on the stand so that you can aim it. Huh. Hmm. Old Bandai coming up with their cool little uh, mounting options. Let's see. So we got Legos. We got vaccines. What else is up? Um, what's going on? It's almost pool time. Pool time? Yep. Anthony took the cover off of his pool. He bought a 1960s house, 70s house, sorry, that is, uh, he is in the middle of repairing, and it had a pool. So he took the cover off of his pool. I haven't taken the cover off of mine yet. Man, this sounds like a really pretentious conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Antonio, my pool boy, has recommended yeah, I was not to. to say. <laughs> but no, I have a pool. I have an above ground pool. Anthony has a pool. We have houses with pools. We're not the only people in the world. But it is amazing that it's like it's spring now. All of the like Bradford pear trees that we have yeah. down my street are all blooming white. Like it looks so pretty. It was warm out. It's supposed to get super cold tonight. But like it's springtime. And it makes me happy that it's not going to be cold anymore. I well, love it. Well, it is Kentucky, so I'd give it another month or so because mm. we could have snow. Yeah, I know. Um, I saw you post about your tree. 
Oh, that little scrappy do tree. Yeah. So is is it alive? Is it dead? It's What's alive. happening? No, nah, it's not dead. I thought it was dead. I was convinced that tree was dead. We talked about it on here before. Um, we had a tree in my front yard that got diseased, and then the people came and just annihilated it and cut it down and ripped it all up. So we bought a a ginkgo tree that stands. I don't know. It's like three and a half, whatever. It's like a sapling. It had like some leaves on it when we got it. We ordered it, put it in the ground, and then that poor thing. It's got like the bamboo skewer that like holds it as a brace. But then we got a puppy, and so she trampled it a couple times. It completely uprooted. The kids ran over it while they were playing. It got frozen. Um, it's been replanted, I think, twice now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I gave that tree zero chance of living. And Tiff will go up to it every once in a while, like when it was not as cold, it was starting to kind of get warmer. And she would try to look at all the little like sad sticks that are sticking off of this dopey looking thing. And she's like, I see life. And I don't. Never did. <laughs> I'm like, you're delusional. I don't know what you're looking at. And then the other day, there's buds. There's little green buds all on the end of those scary looking Halloween sticks that we call a tree in the front yard. So maybe in 60 years, it'll actually be a legitimate, nice looking tree. But it is alive. Hmm. Against all odds. But, like, that was the thing. When I was looking for a tree, I'm like, I want a tree that won't die. Ever. And it's like, if you get a ginkgo tree. The immortal tree. Yeah. It's a it's a balance. Like, this tree, you can put next to a road. It is, like, impervious to smog. The roots go straight down, so you can put it next to a sidewalk. Um, it doesn't care about sunlight or heat or cold. Like, it's the perfect Venn diagram of residential, really pretty tree, bright yellow leaves in the fall. It's like, yes, this ticks all the boxes, hooray. They're like, but it could smell like human waste if you get the wrong one. I'm like, well, what's the right one? They're like, we don't know. You'll find out human waste. Can't tell until you smell <laughs> Yeah, human waste time, you'll figure it out. So, I don't know. I totally forgot until this moment that there is the chance that that scrappy oh, tree. That line. Oh, no. The thing is barely standing. Hmm. It looks like. Well, at what point is, were you going to find that out? I don't know. Probably after I'm dead, I assume. <laughs> Somebody else's problem. <laughs> exactly. It's going to take a while for that tree to become like what you would look at as a tree and not just a really big bald weed sticking up out of the ground. Well, once, I mean, with most trees, once the tap roots, if it has a tap root, once they start to really dig down, then you get kind of a short period of a lot of growth. Okay. And then it starts to slow down. Um, that's a lot so, of words I didn't know. So, like, taproot is... It's a band in the yeah. early 2000s. Different kinds of, of root systems, of course. But a taproot is a thick root that goes straight down that will go deep, depending on the type of soil and where the water is and all that stuff. If it needs to go down, it will go down and get the water from there. And then you have, oftentimes, a shallow root bed that goes straight out okay. to give it stability so it won't fall over. Makes sense. And so, like, in the south, you have live oak trees where they don't have a taproot. They just have, like, a big, thick, big, octopus. wide, yeah. you know, bed of uh, roots that are almost as big as the above, not uh, as far as, like, area almost as wide as the above ground part of the tree. And so when a hurricane comes through, oftentimes you'll see those live oaks just like laying on their side in this huge flat uh, root wad mm -hmm. up sticking out of the ground. Whereas something that's really tall, like a pine tree, is probably going to have more of a taproot system and it's going to be harder to knock over. It will more likely break. Hmm. I don't know about the ginkgo. Um, I don't know either. But... When either one of those root systems begins to really get a hold, finds water, and like really starts to move, you'll get a lot of growth. Well, that would be fun to see because it's just this reminder that we had a dead tree <laughs> and the ground is like rejecting all creatures trying to live in that area, but little, little Geppetto tree is living. <laughs> it's working. He's not dead. Finished my, uh, my model. Hey, -o. It's got a little pilot. Yeah, it's got a little dude in there. It comes with a little tiny Han. Here, let me go over here to the camera. If you're on YouTube, you can... If you didn't know, if you're listening to this podcast, we do show what we are doing on the No Instructions Podcast YouTube channel. That's a little tiny boat. So if you're at work, hanging out at your desk, and you have the ability to watch YouTube, you can minimize the screen and just listen to us while you work, and then you can watch us 
Watch Anthony crazy mess up cameras. There's a little tiny out of focus Han Solo and Carbon. Han. That's adorable. Focus Han. It won't focus. Anyway, it's a really tiny <laughs> Han and Carbonite. So I have now finished that. Next up, not today, next time, I'm going to start on the Lego Blacksmith Shop. I forgot you bought that one, I too. Did buy that one too. <laughs> Man, I have a problem. You don't, uh, well, I don't have a You problem. were a toy collector before this. Yes. I think so. You just like shifted focus a little. Yeah, that's true. All addicts need a thing. <laughs> I yeah, I mean we've talked about the toy collecting stuff in the past, but I did make a pretty clean break from that, although there are still certain things that I really it's just like cool objects and I don't care whether I get to keep them, but it's fun to um chase down something hard to find mm -hmm. and then get a hold of it and then usually at that point I'm like, Alright, cool, I sell it now or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But there's a few things that I, I like. It was one thing I was going to talk about. Maybe we'll save it for next week. How, how far are we in? I don't know. 43 minutes? Oh, I guess we'll make it quick. Um, Matt and Dustin on No Dumb Questions were talking about the joy of like analog cameras mm -hmm. and how it just brings back a thing. Uh, I'm not going that far, but my kids have really gotten into, I don't even want to call it retro technology, technology of my upbringing. <laughs> you my, can say retro whether you yeah, want to or not. But my wife had a, had a Game Boy. Uh, one of the Maker Alliance members, Mr. Andrew Howard, sent Anthony and I a Game Boy. So, like, my middle son absolutely loves playing a Game Boy. So I bought one from Andrew. It should be here today, cool. specifically for my son. Nice. My oldest son does the dishes and just, like, gets generally annoyed because he hates doing it. And granted, I, I get that. And when I was a kid, I had a CD player. And if I wanted to kind of get away from everybody, I could listen to music. I'm like, he doesn't really have that other than, like, an Echo Dot that sits in his room. But, like, it's loud. He has no way to just, like, escape hmm. with music. And I tried to think back. Like, it was the same conversation that Matt and Destin were having about pictures. Like, what do you actually own? And is it digital? And what do you what do you tangibly have? And I don't know music you can't tangibly have. But now with, like, I have Amazon Music, I can't have that music if I don't have that account. Right. But I did have a fifth generation iPod that was collecting walnut sawdust in my shop. So I replaced the battery and I got a new cable. It boots up perfectly. Hmm. There are mods that you can do. You can take out the hard drive and you can put in a solid state hard drive yeah. with SD cards, which apparently makes the battery run longer and you can up the storage capacity. You can add Bluetooth to them as well. I saw that, but it doesn't work with AirPods. Really? Yeah. So I know a guy named Sam on Twitter who got it. It may have been a different iPod, but he took an old iPod and did all those changes to it and got it working with AirPods. Really? Yeah. Anthony... He is uh, also an Apple developer. Oh. Not, not for Apple, but he Apple he does apps and stuff. Anyway. Well, Anthony led me on to a YouTube channel called Dank Pods, and that guy just like disassembles old music players, all the different generations of iPods, Zooms, the whole deal, and tries to refurbish them all. And he did it. He took a Bluetooth adapter added it inside the casing, wired it to the motherboard so it would take power, added a little LED on the top so you can know when it was paired. But he tried to pair it with the first gen and the, the AirPods Pro, and it wouldn't work. So hmm. I'm going to look that up. Interesting. But I kind of like the fact that it has a headphone jack because he has headphones. He sits at the computer and does his schoolwork with right. his headphones on. And now I have, like, my entire library up to mm, maybe 2010. So the stuff that I found when I was younger, like CDs that I had copied over to MP3s, yeah. stuff I bought on iTunes, stuff I had taken from friends, like is all on there. It's got, it's a video iPod. So it's got like some TV shows and a couple <laughs> movies on it. And yeah, so I went through and I like, of friends. yeah, it's got the episode of the office where Michael gave the video iPod as a, a Christmas present, which I think is I think the, that one came free from iTunes. the best kind of meta. <laughs> oh, there you go. But it was really fun to like just, I know I've talked about before, like being able to curate like a playlist for my son hmm. and now I can do this and he can walk around with it. Yeah. And I gave it to him and he was so stoked and he was like, you know this song? He's like, it, it kind of goes like this. I'm like, yeah, that's. It's called Baby Got Back. I don't really understand what it's about, but. <laughs> Dad, you have a lot of two life crew on you. <laughs> 
But he's like, I created a bunch of playlists. And so there's like, he's listening to Led Zeppelin and he's listening to stuff that I don't know how I would introduce him to those songs because it's, it's just like the blockbuster conversation. Yeah. Like you don't know that something is valuable to you unless you have it kind of in an arrangement somewhere. Right. And so he's digging it. Like he, he was doing the dishes, which normally he would fight me and complain. And I'm like, yo, do the dishes. He's like, okay, great. Put his headphones on and just went to town. I'm like, oh, and your room's really messy. Go clean your room. He's like, okay, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm like, well, this is amazing. <laughs> we had my older two, you know, I think I talked about it here. We got them Apple Watches for Christmas or sometime. I don't know when it was. Um, and it's a, it's turned out to be a really good way for us to have access to them via text and phone without them having any social media, without them, you know, we can control what contacts they get calls from, who they can call, all that type of stuff. But we did get um, Apple Music so that they can listen to music on those. And they both got, I guess they both got headphones for Christmas. That's what mm. it was. We got them the watches last year. And it's been interesting. I mean, I can, I don't think I can actually see the stuff that they're listening to, but it's got parental control on it. So it's, it's relatively safe. Um, but it's interesting to see how much they've turned toward just having headphones on. And we've never been like a big yeah. device family. Like they've never had headphones where they could just block out the world and, you know, stare at a screen like a lot of kids do. We've always fought pretty hard against that. But they're both like preteen teenagers and we're at a point now where it's like the understanding is you have headphones and that's fine and you can listen to music when you're not supposed to be doing something else but if i call your name and you don't hear me yep. those go away yep like first time so they know not to listen too loud a lot of times they'll have one ear out just so that yep. they're available which i think is good i, I do that at the grocery store i don't want them disappearing into that stuff but but yeah i'm agree with you it's it's cool to see them like find a thing like that that they can enjoy i mean because you know music has always meant a whole lot to me right and I totally get that it makes all of those little tasks that you have to do throughout the day a little bit easier, more enjoyable if you've got the thing that you want to hear, not the thing that the whole family has collectively decided yep. they want to hear. You know, it's, it's different. So, And it was an cool. interesting kind of vetting process. I went through my collection. And I'm like, you are not old enough to listen to all of these. And so I'm getting rid of stuff. And then if something was questionable, I left it in. And I'm like, there's, there's probably, I'm like, there's stuff in here that you probably shouldn't hear. But I had a couple thousand songs on there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to miss stuff. I'm like, I am trusting you to know what I expect of you, to know what we believe as a family. Uh, if you have questions about things, then come ask me. I was like, if I hear you repeating words that I don't want you to hear, I will tell you. And then we will talk about that song and maybe we'll get rid of it. But he was asking me, uh, I forgot what band it was. And I was like, Oh, I don't remember all the songs on that album. I don't know what's good and what is maybe not mm. good. And then I tried to think back to myself when I started, like, I bought my first CD. I don't remember. I got a CD player. My mom bought me the Sheryl Crow and Hootie and the Blowfish. And at the time, like, it wasn't bad, I guess. Yeah. But, like, when you start to form your own musical tastes, I was flumming, flipping through, and I was like, there's... All of Evil Empire, Rage Against a Machine. And I'm like, that was the first CD that I bought. Hmm. And I bought that when I was 12. Mm. That and Alice in Chains' self-titled album, I bought them at the same time. And I'm like, I'm going to say no to Rage. You don't need that in your life right now. Yeah. I'm like, I, uh, how much of that Alice in Chains album do I remember? I'm like, there's some really good songs that like I loved. I'm like, I'm going to leave those in there. It, he's not going to get the context yeah. of what people are talking about. He doesn't have like the opening of the of the CD case or like the tape that has all the lyrics. The lyric sheets, yeah. And so we were listening to an Incubus song today that is called Cologne. And it's about uh, the guy has a horrible day. All these bad things are happening to him. He gets abducted by aliens and they stick a probe in his butt. And then at the, after the bridge, it's like maybe all those bad things that happened today just didn't happen to me because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I was irresponsible in these ways and that's why bad things happened to me. And I was like, it has a good message, but he didn't understand a single word they were saying. Yeah. Right. I'm like, so it's a, if there is a song that may be questionable, will he be able to understand it 
You have to listen to it a lot to yeah. internalize it. Yeah. And you have to be able to slow that person down because, like, they're singing it artistically. They're not just like, my life is good, my life is bad. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's, it's music. Yeah. And so I, I definitely got rid of stuff I didn't want them to hear. But if it was a, like, I don't know, or I'm unsure, or maybe this was formidable at a certain point, I'm going to leave it and just yeah. let him grow the way he wants to grow. Maybe he doesn't even care. Right. Maybe he thinks that Stairway is stupid and it's overrated. Sure, whatever. It is. Eh, well, yeah. <laughs> but it's, he leveled up. Yeah. And I, I gave him the keys to this thing that I held very, very dear and like informed my upbringing. And I'm like, oh boy, mm. here you go. I, it's a little, we're late in the show to talk about uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But have you been watching it? I have. Um, just to what you were just talking about, the last episode, I guess it's the second episode, it felt like it had a significant amount of language for a Marvel thing. And that doesn't bother me, except that my kids pointed it out. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, we, we're not squeamish about language in front of the kids they know what they should and shouldn't say what's kind and what's not and just the fact that if if it's abnormal and they've seen every marvel everything so you know all the mcu stuff and so it's not like they haven't been exposed and we don't shelter them completely or anything but you know for them to be able to point out like wow this like one hour of tv had more language in it than movies that we've seen that kind of struck me as a little odd and it's a different thing i think it probably fit the characters and fit the situations and stuff so i don't think it's a bad thing but it did stick out to me when i was watching it and then they brought it up i thought that was kind of an interesting thing maybe next time we'll talk about that show that's good because like i've got some hot takes mm, i can tell you don't like it <laughs> i can tell i can tell i do like it i think it's moving slowly but yeah you have a one line you want to say about it? We can tease for next no, time? Oh. No, I don't because you've already pegged my opinion. I may be wrong. I think that's like a default. Like if there's a new thing that like, ooh, nerdy people like us should care about. And then you go, let's talk about that. And if I don't go, mm-hmm, then you assume that I just don't like it. Like if I have a neutral stance and not like a giddy little girl response, it's like, oh, Josh doesn't like it. It's like, well, I don't think you've ever it's had, more like- complex than that. You don't have a giddy response to much of anything like that, though. Except for Lego. Well, that's true. Um, I don't know. It has Maybe not. It has not hooked me yet. See, <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm giving it I'm giving it a go. It is a slow burn for sure. Uh huh. Yeah, and I'm I'm curious to see if it is gonna continue to be a slow burn. Like it may not be kind of an action movie show. It may be. And they portray military stuff in a very stupid way, and that bothers me. Oh. Okay. It's very easy for the MCU to do it right. Yeah. And they're not. It's very bugging me. It's very much bugging me. I saw I saw an article about that. Um, I don't remember what. It was on Deadline or something. But talking about how they did have the opportunity to change how they portray the military in this one versus what they've done in the past. Yep. And they kind of haven't. They leaned into the dumb. Hmm. And I think that's what bugs me the most. I can't. I can't get over... Like, you watch an Iron Man, and the first Iron Man. It's like, I mean, other than them, like, acting kind of hokey. Like, those are airmen. Those are soldiers. Those are people that do a job. They don't really go any deeper. It's like, he's a three-time Medal of Honor winner. You're like, shut up. First off, you don't win the Medal of Honor. And three times, like, that's ridiculous. Come on. And then the Sergeant Major, whatever, we'll, we'll get into it. <laughs> it's That's a thing that's like, I have to suspend it. Right. But I just don't like that character. And he's always around. I'm like, God, can you? I know he's supposed to be the antagonist right now before yeah. Vimo shows up. But I'm like, just kill that guy off already. Yeah, I mean, I don't kill, like him either Shield. for different reasons. Yeah. But I, yeah. yeah, I think that's, I think they're setting him up to be the direct all your hate at this, you know. For yeah, now. but he's a caricature of the military and I don't like that. Just do don't it you, right or don't do it at don't all. Don't you think that's the idea though? Mm, all superheroes are caricatures of the military. But... Don't pretend to be an actual soldier. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll get another episode under our belt. Yeah. Talk about. 
the three of them. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. Um, well, let's wrap it up. Big thanks to the Maker Alliance, the people that uh, are, are behind the scenes crew that we get to hang out with every month on a Google Hangout. We also talk on Discord all the time and stuff. They do awesome things like send Game Boys to people and stuff. But it's a really, really cool group of people. Big thanks to all of them for being supporters of what we do. Um, where can people find you? I, we haven't ended a show in so long. I can't know how to do it. Uh, you can find me in the latest I Like to Make So video. That's true. Remember that? That happened. That you was a thing that happened. You did all by yourself. Man. I, nobody booed in the comments. There was no boos. Really? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So I take that as a success. Well, you can find um, him at yeah. Josh, Josh underscore make stuff. Underscore make stuff. All of us at I like to make stuff on all stuff. And uh, I guess that's it for this one. So thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.